Special edition of the conversation. Uh, joining me, JD Shulton, the man running as Steve King in Iowa's fourth district. JD, welcome back to the Young Turks. Hey, thank you for having me. How are you doing? Good, good, good to see you, brother. Uh, so, um, has Steve King been in the news recently? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we've seen this uh, song and dance before again and again, and he, he he continues to say that it's the media that misquotes him and all this stuff, and it just it's getting exhausting. But at the same time, uh, we have a lot of folks here in the fourth district that are are ready to uh, pick up where right where we left off. We moved the needle twenty four points last time, and we're just. So excited by the electricity that our campaign and, and our volunteers and everybody uh, has just brought these first few weeks of our, our, our campaign so far. Okay, I, I want to get to your policies. I want to talk a little bit more about Steve King, but I just want people to understand uh, how, how close were you to Steve King in the last election? Yeah, uh, we, we in a district that King is uh, pretty, his average, I think he uh, victory was 23 points. We uh, lost by just three and we got 25,000 more votes than there are Democrats in this district. And we outperformed the top of the ticket by 17 points. And so uh, by all accounts, uh, we took a race that nationally folks thought was unwinnable and, and we came just within inches and, and like I said, we picked up right where we left off and, and last time we hope to win, this time we expect to win. Yeah, and guys, it's actually uh, a little encouraging. I, I know it's discouraging that a guy like Steve King uh, it is now a sitting United States Congressman. And if you don't know, we'll get to some of his highlights for how insane he is and racist and sexist and all of that. And it's not hyperbole, he, flat out uh, by his own admissions. Oftentimes, uh, but uh, but on the other hand, it's encouraging that a district that used to be deeply red is now you know almost uh, uh, flipped to blue. And and I think I, I agree with you, JD. There's all the reason in the world for optimism that it will flip to blue this time. And and that so that goes to show you um, that people are like they listen and they and they are bothered by it. It's not like. Because we have this sense, JD, sometimes it gets depressing, right? Because no matter what Trump mm -hmm. does, it seems like he holds on to that Republican base. But in your district, I think there's reason to believe that that people are not as bad as their Republican legislators. And that's exactly the point. We have a lot of great people here. Uh, the, the difficulty is that there are 70,000 more registered Republicans than there are Democrats. Uh, but when you have a campaign that doesn't write anybody off, who goes out there, and, and just we have our message and it doesn't matter if you're white, uh, black or brown, if, if you're Republican, Democrat, independent, we're gonna come to a town near you and we're gonna show up. And I learned uh, my strategy from my two political heroes, which are Berkeley Bedell and Tom Harkin. And, and they were uh, uh, in these ruby red areas, they represented 80% of what is now the fourth district uh, uh, back in the 80s. And, and we see a lot of similarities with the farm crisis of the 80s, with what's happening now in agriculture, with the second most agriculture producing district in America. And, and so uh, I, that's a lot of reason why we have a lot of hope here in, in the fourth district. So recently, Steve King's famous for saying a lot of uh, racist uh, things about how the dreamers aren't really uh, good students. Uh, some of them are, but a lot of them dragged, uh, he said, bags of marijuana across the desert, and that's why they have cantaloupe calves. He said, yeah. when did and white supremacy and not white our strength? Yeah, yeah. He said, when <laughs> did white supremacy and white nationalism become bad words? Okay, yeah. but recently he he talked about rape and incest, and the, and he seemed to minimize it, saying, "Well, that's how we all got here. There was a lot of rape and incest in the world, and and so what's the big deal about putting a law in there uh, where uh, somebody can't get an abortion even if they were the victim of rape or incest?" So I know how that played nationally, but how did that play in your district, JD? Well, it, I mean, we, like, we're a more, we lean more conservative, but at the same time, a lot of pro-life people are not with him on this. And uh, the the issue, he had a press conference today, and one of the biggest issues of it is he doesn't uh, account for the victims of rape and incest. And, and it's just, it, it really fires me up because I have a really close friend who, uh, I, I've known her for about a decade now, and, and before we met, she 
uh, was a, a victim of rape. And I know the struggles and, and the counseling and, and everything that she's gone through. And when King talks about it in, in this way, I can't help but just feel for her and all the survivors. And, and we just get done with all this uh, Epstein uh, 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 rapes and, and, and just it, – it just – it's disgusting and, and – this is not what this district is about, and and to have a congressman who continually to, to to say con- all these controversial things, and at the same time, uh, we got fifty five thousand farmers in my district who have their back against the wall, and, and we got to find answers and solutions to that. And he's out here pushing his unconstitutional uh, and his uh, freedom restricting ideology, and it, it's it's tiresome, and, and we need to move on from him. So I want to make sure everybody knows the the website. It's Sholton4Iowa.com, the, it's the number four. And we'll have all the links to donate and volunteer in the description box below if you're watching later on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, JD, you don't take corporate PAC money, right? Absolutely not. So uh, you've got to help people who don't take corporate PAC money with small dollar donations. Oh, well, you can make them as large as you like, okay? And make sure you're out there <laughs> uh, volunteering. Well, not as much as you like, but $2,700 if you, if you want, well, bless your heart. But, but, but here's, here's the thing with that. Um, and and we're, I'm blessed uh, 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 to have a lot of folks uh, given 5 to $10. Uh, but, but when you talk about the finance of these campaigns, uh, it's gone up with inflation from last cycle to this cycle $100. Uh, th- that a maximum uh, donor can give, or a donor the maximum uh, for a federal race. But at the same time, we're stuck in Iowa at seven dollars and twenty-five cents for the last decade for minimum wage. How nuts is that? That's how messed up our economy is, and 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 just it, it's extremely frustrating. And when you have a people-focused campaign, and, and you get out there to the people and prove that you're trustworthy, and prove that you're going to fight for your constituents, that is how we got. Uh, uh, we move the needle 24 points. Yeah, look, at $7.25 equals a little over $15,000 for the whole year. So mm-hmm. people have no idea how hard it is. I actually wanna talk about your experience on that, but I gotta ask one last thing about Steve King, because there's no end to the controversies with him. And then speaking of your people in your own district, so a constituent goes up and asks him uh, about, hey, I, I had this, uh, she's a teacher, and she's like, I had this student who's, I think it was 10 years old and uh, and was raped by her uncle. And so are you really saying that she sh- should have carry that baby to term even though it might actually endanger her life? And he's like, "Oh, I didn't know that happened." Yeah. You do- yep. And so <laughs> and he said, "I got to think about it." I got to think about it. But Yeah. I, so look, that's just so outrageous. And and I got and JD, I keep wondering I mean, do you see it? I know you got your volunteers, but they were on your side anyway. Do you see it in the streets, the diners, the cafes, at, at all? Like that, it's embarrassing that the, this guy represents your district. A- absolutely, and that's uh, that's one of the biggest things. Heck, we even have a T-shirt, one of the most popular T-shirts at a popular uh, store in, in Des Moines, says "Dear America, sorry for Steve King, sincerely Iowa." People do feel embarrassed, and it's not just Democrats. It's I. I remember going uh, since the last cycle, going to uh, Iowa City or, or Des Moines or Cedar Rapids. Those are all other areas of, uh, in other districts, and those folks uh, come up, or I have folks coming up to me who are Republican, and they're like, "You need to get rid of them." And I'm and, and I said, "Just wait." <laughs> Shulton for Iowa dot com. All right, let's talk about uh, your history a little bit. So. Uh, Tell me like where you grew up, uh, what you wound up doing, and why'd you come back to, to your uh, district? Yeah, well, I'm currently in my childhood home. Uh, it was funny, uh, uh, 2016 was a very influential election for a lot of people, especially a lot of people who ran for the first time last cycle. And it same for me, and, and uh, right after the election, I, I wanted to get more active, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. And uh, at the time I was living in Seattle, um, and I went to visit my grandma, who's my inspiration in my life and, and for our campaign. And, and she told me, JD, you need to move back to Iowa and take care of the farm. That got my mind going a little bit. And a month later, uh, she passed away. And at her funeral, that's where I, at that rural church, I felt that pull to come on home. 
And a month after that, the inauguration happened. And the next day I'm in Seattle and I went to the women's march there and I was so blown away by the raw power and energy. That's when I said, I, I can't sit on the sidelines anymore. I'm going home and I'm going home to fight. Uh, after a, a few months of being here, uh, actually when I was I moved back, I was trying to find a job and in my hometown paper, the Sioux City Journal, after looking for a job for a month, the best job I could find was 15 bucks an hour and no benefits. And, and there's no wonder why we have uh, an aging population and we're losing our youth and we have a youth drain here. And so I said, uh, well, after a while, I realized there's nobody on the Democratic side in this race uh, last cycle. And so I launched my campaign very humbly, didn't know if I could raise $5, but I knew I could get out to the people. And we went to all 39 counties at least three times, most of them five, six times. And uh, we just earned votes. And, and uh, I, just, I was so proud of uh, my campaign, my staff, my, all our volunteers. And, and when you move the needle that much and you create a district that's been abandoned for, from the Democratic Party for a while, and you, you create something special, I just couldn't let it go. And, and when you have uh, Representative King, uh, uh, just it, everything he stands for and, and, and who he is, uh, and when we were that close, uh, I had to run again. So um, a lot of people when Trump won talked about moving to Canada. I love <laughs> that your instinct, JD, was no, I'm going to go back home and fight. Um, yeah. Uh, have I mentioned Shulton for Iowa.com? <laughs> <laughs> so um, all right, look, wages in your district are disastrous, and and mm-hmm. people in Washington don't get it, and and how much people are suffering. They just go, what what low unemployment? Yeah, it's seven dollars and twenty five cents. So if you're in Congress, how would you raise wages there? Well, it, and it goes to far beyond that. The way DC and the way that the Republicans like to talk about the stock market, and I, I don't have stocks. And, and so much of this district, it's not only just raising the minimum wage, it's fighting for that 60, 70, and $80,000 jobs. Uh, a lot of what I wanna do is bring technology into this district. And uh, I actually have an event coming up in a few weeks with uh, Congressman Ro Khanna, uh, here in the district. He's putting a, a uh, he's working on a project in Jefferson, Iowa, to put seventy thousand tech or seventy thousand dollar tech jobs in that town, and that's a game changer for that community. And so, uh, that's that's a huge part of, of what I wanted. You talk about uh, um, like the Green New Deal and and and. and uh, economic investment in these rural areas, because ultimately, at the end of the day, we all know that our economy is going to be up against China, and it can't just be Silicon Valley or the fifty uh, uh, counties that venture capitalists invest in versus China. It's got to be the United States uh, versus China, and they haven't had a war since nineteen seventy nine. Uh, they're investing in themselves. In fact, from 2011 to 2013, they produced and consumed more concrete than the entire United States did in the 20th century. So they're building. Wow. And if we're not, yeah. And I if, didn't if know that's that. You know, it, it, blows, it blew my mind, and it still does. And if, if we're not competing against that, if we're not building, uh, we're going to fall behind. And it's got to be every district. And what does that mean for a district like the 4th District? Uh, we absolutely know that the economy is moving towards a green economy, and so let's put an infrastructure uh, in place. Let's we have uh, we lead the nation in wind energy, so let's let's and let's get on solar and, and let's uh, get our agriculture technologies, and we got to pay our farmers for their environmental services. Let's go towards that and, and let's build because the last time America built something great, I think it was the Eisenhower uh, Highway System. Yeah, and, and that. That's far beyond my days, and <laughs> that's way back there. Yeah, and progressives like Bernie Sanders now talking about uh, creating 20 million jobs by rebuilding the energy infrastructure of this country, Absolutely. like we built uh, the transportation infrastructure under Eisenhower, and that did work, and it created a great economy. So it's not like it's not been done before. It's not like it hasn't worked before. We we have a precedent for this. So um, it, when you go to talk to people in the individual districts, when I talk to people running for office or others, usually the number one complaint is either jobs, meaning wages, or healthcare. So what's the situation with healthcare in your district? 
I mean, we got costs are rising and accessibility is shrinking. We need a national rural plan when it comes to health care. Uh, we have uh, Senator Harkin, my hero, did a great job of getting uh, community health centers out here. And for a while, we had uh, mobile units that go out in some of these rural areas and, and uh, the, I, to just do regular checkups. Uh, I think we need to have something like that back there. Uh, my goal is Medicare for all. Uh, we got to get there somehow. Uh, we, we, we just, the basic thing in this district is that nearly every gas station that I stop at, there's a donation box for somebody who just got sick, or somebody who just got in the hospital. And we have far too many GoFundMe sites. We have far too many uh, pancake breakfasts to pay medical bills in this district. And, and we're the wealthiest country in the world. We're paying the most per person. And yet people are, are struggling. Uh, and, and to get back to Congressman King a little bit, when he, if he wants to talk about reproductive health care, since he's been in office, the state of Iowa has lost 30 OBGYN units in, in the state of Iowa. And including one in Iowa Falls, a population of about 5,200 people uh, since the election. And so what's he doing for that? You know, uh, it's so if you want to uh, raise a family there and you, you, you have expecting a child and you want health care for this, you have to drive an hour or so to Ames or, or out of district to Waterloo uh, to, to seek the care you need. And those are the issues that matter in this district. And so when we give him the oxygen for his controversial statements, this district lose, loses uh, with, with its basic needs. So I feel like if you told constituents, guys, if you do Medicare for all, single payer, whatever you want to call it, right? You never have to worry about uh, raising money for health. You know, treating uh, someone sick in your family ever again. Like, no matter what happens, you're going to be covered. Wouldn't that be just a giant weight lifted off the shoulders of that community? Absolutely. And you look up up north, up in Canada, and how that got done. Uh, their universal health care that was Saskatchewan farmers. Farmers don't have employer health insurance, and, and so I think there's a huge opportunity right now for this because. When we went out to all 39 counties and we talked, we had our uh, farm forums, the number one thing we heard, it more than low commodity prices, more than uh, the renewable fuel standard being abused, more than uh, these trade wars, uh, uh, the number one thing we heard was health care. And th there are solutions here. And, and uh, we have to be, I mean, it's obvious, we are the party of health care. The, the other party they're not even trying to have the status quo. They're trying to take it away. And so uh, I, I think that was a huge part of our message. And people understand that in, in this district. And and uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm very optimistic because these are just common solutions uh, to, to something that affects everybody. And not only – we are a, a very – or the backbone of this district is agriculture – and it's small businesses. To tell me that that won't improve our finances and our, our business relations when it comes to that, if a small business is coming along, uh, it can compete with those corporations that can offer benefits. Uh, now, another upside of if JD wins is that it would be the greatest uh, personality switch in US congressional <laughs> history. To go from the most indecent guy in Congress to, to potentially the most decent guy there is. So, JD, look, uh, we talk about the farmers. So, I was going to ask you if it's a stereotype that, that there's a lot of farms out there, but apparently it's not. <laughs> from from all you're saying, <laughs> it's uh, yeah. there's farms everywhere. So, how bad did the tariffs hurt out there? Well, it, I think uh, they they came at a horrible time. Uh, absolutely, there's no doubt about it. But I think there's this national narrative that if you take away the tariffs. Uh, the farmers are going to be okay, and, and that is not true at all. Uh, we need uh, uh, there. There's a lot of different things we need, but but one of the things that I want to do is the amount of subsidies that are that's going towards our farmers right now. And I'm not asking dollar for dollar. I'm asking ten cents on the dollar. Allow for an alternative, uh, because right now in my district, 39 counties, we have two farm to table restaurants. That I that I'm aware of, 
Uh, and if you go on Highway 20 east of here, uh, the next three towns, two of them have lost their grocery stores in the last five years. And the last one, uh, or in, in, well, both of them uh, have gained dollar generals. So if you want to just make the, have a, a basic LB, uh, BLT sandwich, the, if you're going to get the tomato, you're either going to have to grow it yourself or go into town to buy it. And uh, the, again, this is the second most agriculture producing district in America. All these farmers aren't making a dime right now. Uh, if you're a, a row crop uh, producer, if, whether it's soybeans or corn, the way you make money right now is praying that another area, like Il- even the next state over, Illinois, has a drought. That's the only way, or one of the one of the only ways that you're going to make a dime. This system uh, is is flawed, and we've maxed out or, or close to maxed out a lot of this. We need to find solutions, and so if we can get a market, a small market, and just have an alternative uh, to diversify a little bit, uh, uh, and I think. We're getting on the path to uh, more environmental friendly practices with technology, with uh, cover crops being incentivized. We need to continue on that. Um, but, but every 25 years, every generation, there's a, a, a dramatic change in agriculture. And it's been like that for over 100 years now, uh, since, since we went from a plow uh, uh, by the horse, uh, horse and plow to, to a tractor. And I think it's time now. And if and I get asked a lot, uh, or last cycle, I got talked to a lot by a bunch of agriculture groups. They go, "Well, if you beat King, you're going to be a freshman congressman. What type of power do you would you have?" And I go, "If I beat Steve King, you don't think every Democrat in D.C. is going to listen to me, especially on agriculture? I'll have way more of a voice than he ever have, uh, ever will have." And that's before he got stripped of his committees. Yeah, that's true. He has uh, uh, no power at all because he doesn't have any committee uh, seats anymore. But uh, I and that was, of course, before uh, this last cycle. Now the idea of come on, what could a freshman congressman uh, get accomplished anyway? Could could you really affect the national conversation? I don't think anybody's saying that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. Shulton for Iowa.com. By the way, we were showing the visuals of your campaign ad. Looks like it's out of a movie, man. Kind of want to come uh, and join you uh, in Iowa, <laughs> go to a diner with you. Uh, I, I told the folks, I go, hey, if we can make it so if I don't win or after this campaign, after we do win, uh, I, we can give it just to the Iowa Tourist Board, that'd be great. <laughs> All right, uh, we got that going for us too. All right, everybody, go to the links, uh, make a difference, get Steve King out of Congress, put JD Shulton in. Uh, not only biggest disparity in decency, but also in intelligence. <laughs> Make America better that way. <laughs> All right, JD, you're awesome. Thank you for joining us on the Young Turks. Appreciate it, brother. Uh, it's, it's an honor to have, be on here again. Thank you. Thank you, man. The TYT Plus app is now available on iOS and Android. Download to get more TYT content at tyt.com app.